let's try out another problem here. So I've got a Piper Cherokee General Aviation Aircraft. Okay, so here it is. This is what Piper Cherokees look like. Is it really? I've got no idea. I'm, I'm imagining it has a propeller. And some landing gear. There you go. There we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. Probably some little wheels in the back too. This is amazing. And you know what? Just for fun, a rocket booster. I don't know why they added that on there, but you know what? They did it. Now, if I'm looking at the wing, which is what I actually care about, it's got a cord of 1.6 meters. And let's see, anything else we don't know? We know there? Nope. And it's flying at 135 miles per hour. Okay. So velocity is equal to 135 mph. And we're going to say that our viscosity, because we're going to need that, is equal to 1.7894, again, times 10 to the negative fifth kilograms per meter second. So what do we want to find? We want to find the boundary layer thickness. And we're going to do that for both laminar and for turbulent flow. So what is the boundary layer thickness for laminar? And what is the boundary layer thickness for turbulent? Because I don't know. And it really is just plugging and chugging. We, like, we don't have anything too crazy here. So for laminar, it's simply 5 times x over the Reynolds number based on location. Okay. And for turbulent, it is, let's make sure I write down the number equation right, yes, it is 0 0.37 times x over the Reynolds number, not square root, not square root, my bad. To the fifth power. Right, it's not a negative sign, let's erase that. Perfect, that looks good. So if I know the Reynolds number, I've got it. Now we're also trying to figure out the max boundary layer thickness. So we're gonna go for the trailing edge right here. And so in that case, x is gonna be equal to the cord. I can do it at any particular point I care about, but that's the point I'm going to do. So all I need to do to solve this is know what the Reynolds number is. <laughs> okay, so let's calculate Reynolds number. I'm sorry, it's just these equations are they're too simple. So rho and fivy. After going through all that hard work with the um, you know, shocks and expansion fans, they they deserve a break. Okay, I guess they guess this is there. They're taking a break here. Okay, the big thing I don't know is I don't know what V infinity is because that's in miles per hour, and so we're going to convert that. So let's do that. 135 miles over one hour. I'm going to go to meters per second. So one mile is 5,280 feet, and 3.28 feet is one meter. Feet cancels, miles cancels. I need to get rid of hours. I know that one hour is 3,600 seconds. And if you wanted to, you could have totally Googled this, but I'm doing it to show you that I can do it. I have the ability. And so that means that V infinity is equal to 60.36 meters per second. Okay. So with that, I can then plug all my numbers in for the lambda case and the turbulent case once I figure out my Reynolds number. So, Reynolds number will be equal to 1.23 kilogram per meter cubed. I'm just using the regular value for sea level air times the velocity, which is 60.36 meters per second, times the cord, because that's where the um, boundary layer bit will be at its thickest, all over my viscosity, which is 1.7894 times 10 to the negative fifth. I get a Reynolds number of 6.64 times 10 to the 6. Don't be surprised when you get Reynolds numbers in the millions. That's very, very common. Okay, now let's just plug into our equation. So my boundary layer thickness for a laminar flow is equal to 5 times 1.6 meters over the square root of the Reynolds number. So square root of 6.64 times 10 to the 6. And so that gives me a boundary layer thickness of 
2.56 times 10 mega seven meter mega second meters, which is just 2.56 centimeters. So it is growing. And also turbulent. It's going to be equal to I think it's this fish right here. Yeah. Oop, my bad, my bad. Pulled the wrong number from the wrong place. It was. Sorry. Look in the wrong section of my notes. Uh, I apologize. I failed you all. It's 3.105 times 10 to the negative third meters, which is equal to 0.311 centimeters if it is laminar. And then turbulent, okay, now we're doing it right. 0.37 times x, which in this case is equal to the core, which is 1.6 meters, all over my Reynolds number to the fifth power. So 6.64 times 10 to the sixth to the one fifth power. And that comes out to be what I said before, which is 2.56 times 10 to the negative second meters, which is simply equal to 2.56 centimeters. So we can see that when we go from laminar to turbulent, we have a much, much thicker boundary layer. It has increased in size by roughly a factor of seven. It's big. And so with that, we get more drag because it's having more air that's pushing in the way, more air that's grabbing onto it. You can think about all this air that's being affected by the boundary layer as the air that is grabbing onto it. And so the more air I have grabbing onto it, holding it back, the more drag I'm going to have. But that is it. We did it. Thank you all for listening.